All right. I was supposed to record another episode at least yesterday, but <laughs> I had some technical considerations that got in the way of doing that. So here I am. It's a new day. I'm going to continue The Witcher. This bard's tale begins near White Orchard, with my dear friend Geralt of Rivia seeking his lover of yore, the sorceress Yennefer. She'd eluded him for years, but now seemed just a few steps ahead. I spent hours yesterday trying to get OBS's ability to encode with FFmpeg to work the way I wanted it to. I wanted to use FFmpeg's HEVC, high efficiency video codec with NV Inc, NVIDIA's on GPU encoder to be able to encode these directly Don't touch me. to HEVC, which by default OBS cannot do. I had limited success, but I just, I can't, I didn't figure out. It took me a long time just to get it working at all with my custom settings. It just kept on defaulting to settings before I figured out the syntax for some strange reason is completely different than using FFmpeg from the command line, which I have a lot of experience doing. I've even made scripts to do that shit. What? Take that down before there's trouble. That is a coat of arms. The Temerian lilies. They've a right to hang there. He knows what it is. That's why he told him to turn her to take it down in the first place. It's Nilfgaard now. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. This is, this is the writers telling us. Who's who and what's what? Oh, damn, she's taking it down. What? Witches. I'll not drink with Weaver Laws freaks. I wasn't going to set your table. I'm just here to do my own thing, all right? Beg your pardon for those thugs. No need. We're used to it. Folk are jumpy around here. Armies just passed through. Now a griffin's prowling about. Mm -hmm. Already had the pleasure. Ran into your kinsman, Bram. Bram? How is he? Alive. Sends his regards. Master witches. Food and drink on the house. What can I get you? Dialogue shops. Options marked with a bag of gold will open the shop panel. And I got some roasted chicken legs. That's very nice. That's really great. Let's, let's, let's converse. <laughs> let's converse somewhat. That's a, that's a weird line from a sixth song. I, f I can't even remember the name of the song, but it's got a lot of spoken word in it. And the guy says, try to converse somewhat. He says it in an Australian accent, because apparently they're Australian. So let's try to converse with her somewhat. Pretty busy place you got. Nation's on the move. Some search for kin. Others just want to get out of the way of the armies. They all need food, drink, and a night's rest in warmth. Must be doing good so business then. It's been good for your trade. Aye, so far. But it'd be best to know peace again. Times like these, you never know what tomorrow will bring. There a contract on that? Yeah, the Nilf guards. Aye, not at the moment. Used to be. Soon as a beast had built a nest nearby, the alderman would start a collection or go to the lord for help. Now the alderman don't use the privy without asking the black one's permission first. And seems they hanged the lord. 
Cost or no contract. Not from sure. these people. We might have done something, but not for free. Yeah, this is not a blind playthrough by any stretch of the imagination, so. I'm gonna be just dropping hints and spoilers left and right. Let's look for a Looking woman. for a woman. Raven haired, violet eyes, dresses in black and white, riding in from Willoughby. And, uh, strange as it sounds, lilac and gooseberries might have smelled that. I've not seen nor smelt such a lady. I believe I'd remember. Yeah, especially hard to forget this one. Plenty <laughs> travelers about, though. Folk from all over. Might be worth your while to ask after her. Any conversations? Mm, okay. Let's just take a look at the wares. What you got behind the counter? Buy and sell items using the shop panel. Double click an item to purchase it. Press escape to close the shop panel. So as is customary with Witcher games on release, the the basic interface for The Witcher 3 was horrific. It was really bad. Not as bad as the initial launch interface of The Witcher 2, which was al almost unusable in many ways. But they did end up making many tweaks and changes, and I also believe that the friendly interface mod makes some changes. I don't, again, I don't know exactly <laughs> what it all does, but rather than try and take in all the tweaks, because it's a big list of tweaks, take it all in at once. I'm just going to uh, just sort of launch into the game and learn as I go. So I want to buy these cards, but I don't know what Gwent is yet, canonically, so... After I go talk to the scientist guy from... Shit, what's the name of that city? Funnily enough, I remember where it is on the world map. But I can't remember the name of the city. Thanks. Oxenfurt! For everything. Oxenfurt! That's it. So I'm going to have to find the scientist and learn about Gwent. Help you bandage that up? Please. I'm not decrepit yet. Then I'll ask about Yennefer. Mm-hmm. Just remember, we'd rather not draw any attention. Black one's been out measuring the fields. Let him measure. Better that than burning the harvest. Oh, Drommel. Drommel, you're dumber than a headless cockerel. Why are they marking out them lines, eh? Pass them out their patrimony. Give it to their own. Headless cockerel is another way of saying chicken with its head cut off. I think. Sounds close. I'm looking for someone. And we seek some peace and quiet. No, you're my rude. Face, freak, for your breath sours my beer. Excuse me. It might sour your mood, but it won't sour your beer. Options mark with the... Shit, what's it called? Oh, Axie sign. This sign influences people's minds, causing them to act according to your will. This is not, in fact, the Jedi mind trick you are looking for. To charm more stubborn individuals who would otherwise resist during a conversation, invest in the delusion ability in the character panel. I just want to talk. I just want to talk. You deaf stray. No one here will talk to you. His company you seek, stick that mangy snout of yours in a trough with the pigs. <laughs> Show that shit eater, Micah. Running low on patience. Once it's gone, your head's over. Oh, you're threatening them now. No call for anger. See a raven haired woman here, dressed in black and white. We know nothing, sir. Leave us. <laughs> now they'll talk to me, though. Leave us. We don't want to talk. Be gone. We don't want to fight. We'll not talk to you. Alright, so you don't have to use Axie there. Locked. Locked from the outside. 
nothing to loot in here. They're playing Gwent. Clubs and spades, except each suit has its own face cards. There are also special cards. Wouldn't you rather play war? It's like to be near dawn before you get your game in the noggin. It's too complicated for this guy. It's actually a very simple game, and a lot of people enjoyed Gwent as a mini game in The Witcher 3. And they were hoping for a more expanded version because the version that's in the game is really a simple game. And they got their wish. What a waste of time! The Earth shall revolve around the sun before you comprehend these rules. Got a minute? Nice astronomy joke. Why not? Aldert Gitt, assistant professor in contemporary history at Oxenfurt Academy. Geralt of Rivia, Witcher with tenure. Oxenfurt Academy. Academy. Long hair, dressed in black and white. Seen anyone like that? Of course not. Unlike the populace, I know the horsewoman of war is pure poppycock. Poppytosh. Horsewoman of war. What's that about? Folks say an omen. A beautiful phantom rides the fields at night, looks as you described her, armies follow her, and all who cross her path meet with misfortune. Well, sounds like who we're looking for. Last bit. Know where they saw her? No facts interest me, not fairy tales. Okay, whatever. Not a place I'd ever expect to find a scholar. Take it you're fleeing the war? Quite the opposite. Chasing it. I'm headed for the front. Tired of life. I seek knowledge, which I value more than life itself. I have a thirst no dusty old tomes can quench. I wish to see the Nilfgaardian invasion with my own eyes, understand it, and record it all in my chronicle, my magnum opus. If you're so big on knowledge, then why are you just writing off all the folk tales? You really think people have an imagination these these simple folk of an imagination that will allow them to come up with fantastical stories out of whole cloth or maybe you think there's something to be discovered some maybe some misunderstanding that you could investigate and find out what's really going on you could clear it up and help improve these people's understanding of the world and the universe and maybe you could even convince them that the Earth revolves around the sun. Oh, wait, you don't believe that either because you're such a knowledgeable fellow. All right, write about the war, what it's really like. Yeah. Interesting. We need somebody to describe war, what it's really like. Not colorful banners and generals making moving speeches, but rape, violence, and thoughtless cruelty. Ah, I see you lack the polish of the Academy. Rape and cruelty are details of no import to the war's course. Trinkets on the garment of conflict, one might say. Certain extent, that's true. To the people whose houses burned down. Yeah, well, that's... Geralt has a very common man's perspective, but of course the Academy is going to be very interested in the movements that drive societal and civilizational changes. And whether or not people are getting raped or their houses burned down doesn't really matter in that context. I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's a big deal in terms of human experience, of course. But it's not really what scholars want to write about. They want to write about the movements of, of power and of influence within a society. I don't care about your, I don't care about your mom getting raped by some... Terrible bastards who were really, really on the edge of sanity due to so much cruelty and violence that they have experienced and perpetrated themselves. That's not what the Academy is into. And that's not what people are going to remember a thousand years later about your war. People just take that as a given. But what people don't necessarily take as a given is what the actual outcomes on 
civilizations are. Those are the things that are really worth knowing and studying many years later. And this is a scholar of great ambition. So that's what he wants to be writing about. I understand his perspective. And I don't know if the, the people who wrote these this, this conversation meant it that way or if they just wanted to make this scholar sound like an asshole. But if they really did understand what they were saying, I agree with them. I agree with the perspective they input into this character. And it also does a great job of setting the tone of this game world for people that may not may not expect something like that to be said. But there's plenty of stuff like that in this game. Let's continue. War reached Novigrad yet? Nope. But it's only a matter of time. Nilfgaard on one bank, Redania on the other, drooling over the city like dogs over a juicy bone. Many a ruler's choked on that bone. True. We value our liberty in Novigrad, and we know how to fight for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Scott Novigrad's kind of a... The sword is not the only weapon. Independent city. Don't forget, architects from our academy designed the city walls. Walls no war machine has ever crumbled. Can you build a wall on our southern border? Because we got a president who promised that he was going to, but he's having a really hard time getting it actually done. So, can you design some walls? We really need them if we want to avoid being absorbed into Central and South America, which we really would like to do. Uh, that's, I mean, you look south of the border, there's a lot of stuff that uh, we don't want to become a, car, a part of our society. And a wall, a nice, big, beautiful wall like the Novigrad walls, they might be a little bit of a step towards that. Not, by no means... 100%, probably not even 50%, maybe not even 33% of the way there. But it's a step and a necessary one. Necessary but insufficient, as the philosophers might say. I think I could get along with this scholar of Oxenfurt Academy. But for now, I'm going to have to bid him farewell. Gotta go. So long. A moment, Witcher. You strike me as oh, a man right. of the Let's, world. Oh, uh, play some Gwent. Are you familiar with Gwent? No, and I don't have time to learn. But the rules are quite simple. Come, let's play. Options marked with cards. We'll begin a game of Gwent. All right. Hmm. Why not? Splendid. Here's how it's done. Yes, let's begin the Gwent tutorial, which is the f reason I chose this dialogue option in the first place. Welcome to Gwent. Gwent is an ancient dwarven card game that simulates the clash of two armies in battle. The players are generals, the cards are their forces. Choose a card to redraw. <gasps> to be oh, the tutorial message. Starting hand. To begin, you draw 10 cards. This will be your hand for the rest of the match. You will not draw any more cards, so use these wisely. Unit card strength. This is a unit card. The number in the upper left corner indicates its strength. When placed on the battlefield, this value is added to the total strength of a player who placed it. This is the unit's combat row icon. <coughs> this icon indicates the row on the battlefield where the card can be played. Close ranged siege. Unit card special ability. Some unit cards have special abilities. This Kadweni Siege Expert's special ability is called Morale Boost, which grants plus one strength to all units in the same row. Weather cards. Weather cards are a type of special card that reduce the strength of all cards of a given type on the battlefield, including your own. So you got the Frost neutralizing close quarters. Got the rain neutralized. Wait. No, the rain neutralizes siege. This, I think, was wind neutralizing ranged. At the start of each redraw, at the start of each game, you can select up to two cards to discard and redraw. But let's skip that for now and go straight to playing. 
Yeah, they want me to have a specific set of cards for this tutorial. This is a battlefield, and this is your side. This is your opponent's side. Turns. During each turn, a player may place one card on the battlefield or pass. It's also really nice that they have such a detailed tutorial for Gwent. Compare this to the, the tutorial, and I, I say that with the most scare quotey of scare quotes. The tutorial for, say, Triple Triad in Final Fantasy VIII or the card game in Final Fantasy IX. They are very difficult to figure out how to play based on the in-game information. Each deck has a leader. The leader grants you a special ability which can be used only once during a battle. Trigger the special ability at any point by pressing X. Press enter to select a card from your hand. Press enter again to place it on the battlefield or you could just click. All right, so what do we have here? It's a really basic foot soldier. Sabrina Glesvig, <coughs> daughter of the Kedweni Wilderness. It was there on the front lines, right where the fighting was the thickest. Sheldon Skaggs. Siegfried of Denel. We're on the same side, Witcher. You'll realize this one day. He... Wasn't he in... Siegfried was in Witcher 1? I believe he was. Kira Metz. We will be meeting her eventually. If I'm to die today, I wish to look smashing for the occasion. That sounds like something she would say. Death Mold. I once made a prisoner vomit his own entrails. Ah, good times. And a ballista. Usually we give them female names. Like Jenny? Or like Bertha. Yeah, Bertha's a... Like a butch name. Let's go with Siegfried of Danelle. Total strength. The number on the left by your icon shows the current total strength of your cards. The number on the right shows the total strength for that row. Both values are updated when a card is played. At the end of a round, the player with the highest total strength wins. And so this is where some of the strategy comes into play because it's easy to just play your strongest cards and win a round, but that is not necessarily correct as we will eventually learn. The game does have some strategy. Passing, during your turn, you can pass by holding down space. Once you pass, you cannot play any more cards during that round. Your opponent can continue playing cards until he or she passes as well. You should pass when you are confident you can win with the units you already have in play, or to let your opponent win and save your cards for the next round. That's the key. Knowing when to let your opponent win. Win a round, that is. You don't want them to win the game. Or the match. End of round. A round ends when both players have passed. The players then compare the total strength of their units to determine the winner. All cards on the battlefield are discarded when both players' total strength is reset. So it's a long game. You're playing for the long game. Alright. Don't remember what happens if you have a tie. So I have a rain. <clears throat> so I could use the rain here to neutralize this card. Since I don't have any ranged units right now, that would be to my advantage. And you would have to play quite a lot of units 
to be able to catch up to my six since he's only got two here on his melee. So I think it might be worth it. Okay, how do I play this with just the mouse? Do I really have to press enter? Yes. Oh, I, I needed wind, not rain. Uh, whatever. Motherfucker. Alright, so let's play a five, so I'll, I'll be at seven. Yeah, I forgot rain is not ranged. But if I had wind, which I think is the neutralization, I think that would have been fine. Alright, so let's play four, so I'm one step ahead. Oh, shit. Oh, he's got more ranged. Okay, so I didn't expect them to have this much range. What does my leader card do? Pick up an impenetrable card from your deck and play it instantly. Okay, that's not what I meant to do. And also, it's not wind, it's fog. <laughs> I didn't mean to play it. I didn't. I thought that would put it back. This is a, this is a mess. Screw it. Let's play everything. <laughs> everything man no oh, he's got to use his leader ability well it didn't do anything oh, let's pass <laughs> this is silly this is not how the game is supposed to go player who loses a round also loses a life gem the game is over once a player has lost both life gems Yeah, so, so since you don't draw any cards. Oh, I do because I'm the Northern Realms. But I drew a useless card. It's not useless, but. I'd rather have drawn a unit. <laughs> he just had a clear weather card. Now he's got nothing. Oh, Nilfgaard wins ties, so I can't win the game. Defeat. Pro tips. There's no shame in passing and letting your opponent win a round. Sometimes it's better to save your cards for later. Each deck also features its own heroes. Heroes are high-value cards immune to the effects of special cards. These powerful cards can turn the tide of battle. Acquire more powerful cards by completing certain quests or purchasing them from vendors. What a goofy thing. Yeah, I could have won if I, instead of drawing that Biting Frost. Requires an analytical mind. Instead of drawing that Biting Frost, I just drawn a playable to play a true minion or whatever. A simple innkeep by trade, but a true maestro when it comes to Gwent. I'll remember that. Thanks. Just a playable rather than a useless weather effect. I'm gonna play this asshole again. It's time I'm gonna win. Ah, you return. Shall I deal? I think you don't lose anything for practicing with this guy. Let's play this game of yours. Welcome to the Gwent Deck Builder. More tutorials. Gwent players use their own customized decks. Use this panel to manage your decks. Factions. You can build one deck for each of the four factions. Nilfgaard. 
Northern Realms Monsters and Scoia'tael. Use one and three to switch between factions. Obviously, mapping bumper buttons, because that's really awkward. Each faction features a number of unique cards that encourage a different style of play. Each faction also has a faction perk. Nilfgaard wins any round that ends in a draw. Yeah, I got wrecked by that. Northern Realms grants an extra card after every victorious round. round. I could have won the game due to that, but I lost because of RNG. Squayatel decides who takes the first turn of a battle. Monsters keeps a random unit card on the battlefield after each round. Yeah, Monsters decks are really nice. In fact, all the decks have their strengths. They're pretty well balanced and well designed. But the Monsters can just swarm your ass. And unless, if you're facing Monsters and you don't have the correct weather card, you can just get fucked. Leader cards. Each deck has one leader. Press X to see the leaders available for the currently viewed faction. Yeah, everybody's locked. Press enter to choose the highlighted leader card. Each leader has a unique ability. Use it to turn the tide of battle in your favor. Leader cards that you do not own are locked. They will be, they will be available for you to use once you acquire them. Your collection. <coughs> All the cards you own which can be used with this faction are shown here. Cards currently in this faction's deck appear here. Deck composition rules. Deck must consist of at least 22 unit cards. It can also contain up to 10 special cards. You can include more than 22 unit cards in your deck, but remember that doing so decreases your chance of drawing your most powerful cards. Yep. Building a full deck. Your deck is currently two unit cards short. It's indicated by the red number and how convenient it is that I have two more cards available. Building a full deck. You must use two move you must move two unit cards from your collection to the faction's current deck. You can now exit the deck builder by pressing escape. When in the deck builder before a match, press space to begin playing or escape to quit and forfeit the match. Okay, this guy. See these cards. They're just basic, worth one. Wait, how do I, I want to remove this card. There. <laughs> These cards that are basic, they just got one power. They, do you, they can't have a use. If you've got buff cards, but I think okay, I think poor fucking inventory has a buff effect. Place next to a card with the same name to double the strength of both cards. Okay, so it's just poor fucking inventories will buff poor fucking inventories. And yes, I'm just saying poor fucking inventory is like it's nothing, even though it's obviously a ridiculous name for a card. But, hey. Same effect, tight bond. Yeah, the medic effect is very nice. Spy. Place in your opponent's battlefield. So this is a card that will power add power to my opponent. It'll give him five power, but I can draw cards. This is how you can actually draw from your deck. But this is not a very good one, Prince Stennis, because that is a lot of power given to your opponent. But sometimes it can be worth it with better cards that don't give five frickin' power. There's There are cards that give like one or two power with the spy effect. They're really nice. Okay. So last time I played him, he didn't play any Siege stuff. So we'll do a redraw. Vest, nice. And... Okay, nice. I've got more Siege weapons. And yeah, this guy's almost useless. I want to get rid of that card as soon as possible. 
I mean, get rid of that from my deck completely. Get rid of all the lowly foot soldiers. I mean, even poor fucking infantry is better than those guys. Because they got the, the bonus effect if you play multiples of them. All right, he's played the same card to start with. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Vreemd. Okay, unfortunately I only drew one Blue Stripes Commando. But there's a chance that I could get another one if I play my Spy card at some point during this match. But I'm not going to start doing that. Okay. Go with Vess. Can't remember if she's in this game or The Witcher 2. She was definitely in The Witcher 2, and I can't remember if she's in this game at all. Oh, he's just barely beating me. It's annoying. I don't have the fog card. <coughs> but I could get one with my leader card. <coughs> so I think I will do that. And it's going to hurt me. But it hurts him when it hurts me. <coughs> really? Okay. So a situation like this is where I might want to play this card because I can draw two extra cards and it, since we've got the Biting Chill or whatever it's called, Biting Frost, it will only actually give my opponent one's power. So let's draw some cards. Got a clear skies, alright. I think, what does this do again? Morale boost, okay. I like to save that for when I've, when I do like a big assault with units in that type of row, but I think I might be able to win this round by playing just one. Ah, fuck you. Alright, well, I think I will actually allow him to win this round. Because to catch up, I'd have to play three cards. But I've got a pretty big card advantage on him, which means the subsequent rounds should go very well for me and very poorly for him. So I'm going to pass and allow him to take this round. Okay, he is using some siege equipment. So how am I best going to deal with this? There's a chance I, th I think I should go sort of big on this round because he's only got three more cards. And I don't really think he's likely to get any more cards, so... That big offensive I was talking about with the siege row, I think is good to do here. And I should be able to win the next round pretty easily with my remaining stuff. I've also got a clear skies in case he uses a torrential rain to try and interrupt what I'm doing here. So this should work out for me. It's He's basically going to play everything he's got here. And it's just not going to be enough. He's got one more card. And... 
It's not enough. Just add insult to injury. Oh, I click here. Okay. Just add insult to injury. Screw that guy. Yeah, Northern Realms is pretty good for card advantage, which is very powerful in this game. Very powerful in Gwent. Wait. Oh! Oh, God. I pressed the wrong thing. I needed to play something. Okay, 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 okay. I won that game, but I messed up, all right? Let's play this game. Let's get a real win in here. I passed up playing something first. I just need to play something. Alright. I let's see, what am I what do I have here? Oh, I've actually got multiple blue stripes. Now let's get rid of the torrential rain. Fog. That's not necessarily good because I want to draw that with the special power, so let's throw that back in. Okay, so these blue stripes could probably win this round on their own. Or at least they can force them to play a lot of cards to try and keep up. Just these two cards is plus 16. So I'm actually just going to pass even if he does manage to win the round it's going to be so costly for him that he can't win the game unless he has a biting frost which it, he probably would have played if he did all right so he was able to win the round but he had to play quite a bit all right so i want to avoid I don't want to do this. Do I want to go with... I think I'll go with... Counting on impenetrable fog. Oh, we just passed. Never mind. Okay. Oh, I'll just... Pass. And I drew my fog again. Or that's actually torrential rain. Never mind. Alright, so I want to try and win this round. For sure. This is the last round of the game. And let's just lead with this. Kind of feel out what the opponent's going to be doing. <coughs> Alright, he's got a fog. Fine. So here I could play the Biting Frost, but the problem with that is he could have a Clear Skies in one of those three cards. So I don't want... I don't want to get wrecked by that. I want to make sure that if I play this, it's going to stick to the end of the round. And yeah, I'm kind of going to need it. Actually, maybe not. These are pretty low power. It's only eight. But yeah, it looks like he's got just melee units, so he's going to get completely annihilated. Even without the Biting Frost, maybe. Yeah, he's screwed. Look at you. you poor sucker. Pass for real. Uh, 
an interesting round. If you desire a rematch, let me know. <laughs> he just gets up. You got a new Gwent card. If you want to examine it, open the game menu and go to the Gwent deck panel. Books and scrolls. Use A and D to switch between unread books and scrolls. <coughs> it's right there. Add to the books panel in the glossary. Miraculous Guide to Gwent. The tome you hold in your hands, commissioned by the most gracious Duke de Berry, shall make use of magic most arcane to display which Gwent cards are currently missing from your collection. You need but open it and repeat in your mind. How about a round of Gwent? And the following shall appear. Yeah, how about a round of Gwent? It's actually a meme. <laughs> oh, I, it tells me all the cards I'm missing. I think this is new. They must have added this after I stopped playing. I don't remember this. Miraculous Guide to Gwent that tells me what I'm missing. Yennefer's letter. Dear friend, forgive me for not asking about your health or how you have been these years. Time is very short. I have important news. We must meet, and soon... Ride to Willoughby, near Vizima, and don't spare the horses. While I do eagerly await our reunion, I won't be able to wait, eagerly or otherwise, very long. Your dear friend, Yennefer. P.S. I still have the unicorn. Nice. Contents of what you have read have been moved to glossary. I got Zoltan Chivet. Chivet. As a card. My old friend Zoltan. Quest updates. When one of your quests is updated, a notification will appear on the left side of the screen. If you are not currently tracking the updated quest, you can press V to start tracking it. Collect them all. Books and scrolls. Select the glossary. That's not even highlighting the correct thing. Move. I can't see. Okay, there they are. Books and scrolls. In this panel, you can browse through the contents of all the books and scrolls you have found. Even if you later sell a book, its contents will still be available here. On the left, you can select books, scrolls, and letters. Their contents will be shown in the center of the screen. You don't say, huh? Was that really necessary? I think that was self-evident enough. When is this... Stash. You can store weapons, armor, and junk in your stash for safekeeping. Confident they will not be stolen or dis otherwise disappear. <clears throat> you can access your stash in a number of places throughout the world. Items stored in your stash in one location will be available in all other locations as well. Stash icons are always visible on the map. Look for the green icon. Alright, so I don't remember this stash being here last time I played, so this must have been added. You got a new Gwent card. If you want to examine it, Open the game menu and go to the Gwent deck panel. Whoops. Quick access menu. If you have multiple items in your pockets, you can switch between them using the middle mouse button. Use middle mouse button to change the bolts used with your crossbow. What, what crossbow? What's a crossbow? I don't have a crossbow. Gwent deck. Zoltan Shive. Let's get rid of this garbage. Let's get Zoltan Chive in there. Alright. So yeah, they must have added the stash here. Which is nice. What is that? I got a torch. Wait, what's in the stash and what's... This is my current inventory, right? Everything here. I remember in Novigrad, when I had just too much shit, I would just drop it on the ground, and it's kind of like the Elder Scrolls. It will never despawn if you just drop shit on the ground. All right, let's talk to Gunther Odim. Looking for a woman. Uh. Like <laughs> That's not, not what like I mean. Everyone. And not just any woman. Mine smells of lilac and gooseberries, dresses in black and white. Sounds like a classy woman. 
It'll lift your spirits. Fine. Fine. I'll have a drink. Can we cut to the chase? You seen her or not? Yennefer of Vengerberg. Oh, shit. He knows exactly who I'm looking for. Never mentioned her name. Yet you described her perfectly. And once I hear something, I never forget. Come help it. Alright, I got a free drink. How do you... Well, first, who... How do you know Yen? How do you know Yennefer? What a question. Master Dandelion's ballads, of course. The only way a humble merchant might hope to rub up against greatness. Unless, that is, he's as lucky as I am. And runs into a very patient witcher. It's a Geralt of Rivia himself. The Butcher of Blaviken. Recognize me from Master Dandelion's ballads, too? To your health. What do you do? Who are you? A mangy vagrant. Gaunt to road deem at your service. That's a hell of a name. Vagrant. Got a profession now? <sighs> Once a merchant of mirrors. The madding crowd dubbed me Master Mirror, or the Man of Glass. You seen Yennefer? Deepest apologies, but I must ask. Is this about love? It's none of your business, buddy. None of your business. Yes. As a vagrant, I deserve no explanation. You sure don't. What do you know? Tell me. Before you appeared, it never occurred to me that might have been Yennefer. Who would have thought? Get to the point. An Ilf Guardian scout from the local garrison saw her. Where? At their camp. She rode in there. Dark of night. Black and white. Gooseberries and... Yes. I know. Had a terse exchange with the garrison commander and raced off. Where to? <laughs> I'm not omniscient. Ask at the garrison. Thanks. We men of the road must stick together. Perhaps one day I'll be in trouble and you'll be nearby to help. All right. We've got a little bit of a lead. So, yesterday's recording was technical nightmare. Nothing impossible to deal with nor even really difficult just really frustrating and I've spent so much of this time losing at Gwent <laughs> that before I walk outside and get into this fist fight I'm just going to uh, vent my frustrations and then end the episode and then record a new episode so yesterday when I was reading the total output size of the video, I read it as about 18. I can't remember what I read it as, but I read it incorrectly. It turns out the video was 18 gigabytes in size. That isn't impossible to upload. But that's a lot of fucking data. It's a long upload. So I tried to just go ahead. It's the cat opened the door. I just tried to go ahead and just re-encode it. HEV to HEVC. And I used Adobe Media Encoder to make that happen. Or at least I tried to. Adobe Media Coder was going, running smoothly. I was using its built-in HEVC encoder that is capable of using uh, Intel QuickSync to accelerate the encoding. And it went pretty well. It was running at about real time. A ratio of about one minute 
of encoding time to one minute of video. So that's pretty, pretty nice, especially for HEVC, which is very computationally intense. I literally cannot leave this building without starting the event, so... And that's why I'm just walking around in here. Do you have anything to say? Yes. What is it, Wolf? Why are we standing up? Realize it's been half a year since we hunted down that fiend in Varun. Yes. Well, that was more than a fiend. What was that bastard's name? Drugan? May the soil lie light upon him. Things used to be simpler. Monsters were bad, humans good. Now... Is it really ever that simple? Used, used to be exactly the same. You've just forgotten. Yeah, well, not you forgot. Age. You're near a century old yourself. Alright. See you later, Vesemir. Uh... Yeah, that... Hopefully issues like that have been fixed for Cyberpunk 2077. That's not a great look. So anyways, the encoding seemed to be going well with Adobe Media Encoder, except right at the very end, when it's supposed to just basically shove what it's created into a container. An MP4 container. That's when it fails. It just, it just hangs up and does, it, it still consistently uses 30% CPU, but it's not actually doing anything. So the first time this happened, I tried pausing it and then unpausing it. And eventually I just pressed stop. And pressing stop caused it to delete everything it had already done. So that hour and probably 30 minutes, it had actually been done for at the after an hour, but I waited 30 minutes to see if it would finish and just would never complete. So I ended up just deleting, ended up stopping it, which deleted everything. So I had to redo again. I'd try again, a second try. Why are these things popping up? How did I make that happen? I'll just uh, tap the right click. I think that is actually from the friendly interface mod. Might get a little annoying, so maybe we'll change that. So the second attempt, it was going about as well as the first. And then the same thing happened right at the very end. 99.9% .9 complete. It just hangs up. And I actually did that, ran that while I was taking a nap. So it actually ran for over two hours and just completely froze up. But this time, instead of stopping it, I just forced Adobe Media Encoder to close. And when I did that, it didn't take the initiative and delete what it had already encoded and written to a file. So the file was intact. And I was actually able to remux it along with the audio, which I had uh, manually mixed together, the microphone and the game audio in Adobe Audition. So able to mux that audio and video together and create a working file. But the problem I noticed upon reviewing it very soon after looking at it, I noticed the audio was out of sync. The, aud the audio was about a second and a half behind the video. So I just did a quick and dirty edit in Adobe Audition. Just basically cut out the first second and a half of the, vi of the audio. Moved everything up. And then saved that out. I added a space at the end so that the duration would be the same. Just silence at the end. Remuxed it. And I noticed after that it still wasn't quite right, but it was good enough that I didn't want to mess with it more. So that's part one uploaded yesterday. And I set scheduled release at 8 a.m. 
Yes, we're making a video public on this channel. Not something that happens often. So... The upload was really slow. I don't know whether to blame YouTube or my ISP. The up, my upload bench, my upload speed test was fine, so I don't know. But hours later, after it was should have been done processing, I saw it was only available at 360p. And I'm producing these at 1440p, 60 frames per second, with surround audio. Yes, YouTube does sur support surround audio. And I haven't checked it again today to see if it's working correctly. But that's something I'm going to have to figure out. It's another technical issue. There's so many technical issues with that first episode. I may have another one with this episode too because I'm noticing that rather than 18 gigabytes of data output, also, I'm not using that FFmpeg method because I noticed that no matter what I did, no matter what I do with my settings to get the quality right, it's not going to work for me because it's just not as efficient as using the built-in encoding methods of OBS. OBS's overhead when using FFmpeg is 30% CPU like that rather than right now where it's at 10 15 percent and i just can't get away with that with this cpu the game is using 60 percent my total cpu usage is 93 percent that's i don't have enough overhead for using ffmpeg for real-time hevc so what i did this this time is i went back with quick sync, but I lowered the quality. I'm using LAICQ mode. I lowered the quality. So instead of using, I think 26, ICQ value of 26, I think it's now 32. Yes, the higher the number, the lower the quality. And now the total data output of this recording, even though I've been playing an hour, is only, only two point eight gigabytes about so the quality of this recorder could be lower than i want that's lower than i want you gotta be it's really touchy with uh quick sync icq mode i i found that out the first very first time i started using it when I produced that Solus project, ASMR Let's Play, that barely anybody watched. It was also 1440p, 60 frames per second. And I also had problems with the file sizes being just way too big. So I'm going to have to keep on working with this. Figure out how I want to produce this. So that's about an hour now. I'm going to stop and I'm going to refill my water, refresh myself. Maybe take a little bit of a step outside. Something that's actually more painful for me to do than it should be just due to the nature of how life has been for me. Just stepping outside fills me with feelings of sorrow. It's it's hard to explain and I certainly won't be doing so in uh, the course of the Witcher 3 Let's Play, but maybe a couple things will come out here and there. So I'm going to end this right before it reaches 3,000 megabytes of total data output. And I'm going to see about raising the quality of this for the next episode, where I actually do more than just play Gwent and hang out in a tavern. The quality is going to need to be good for when I go outside and start getting into some fist fights. We want that to look nice and sharp and clear.
So I don't know if anyone will watch this series. It's not even, it's not really a let's play. It's just me recording my self trying to get through this game. I don't know if I'm going to complete the game. <laughs> really, I'm supposed to be playing Final Fantasy 15. That's a game I want to play before I die. The sooner I play it, the sooner I can die without having, you know, that feeling of, oh man, I wish I could have finished Final Fantasy 15 right before my final moments of uh, consciousness. But, I don't know, Final Fantasy 15 just, I did start playing it, but it just isn't, I was hoping for a game with a lot of story, a lot of cutscenes, a lot of dialogue, but so far it's, it's it's open world, but it's like they just throw you into the world without much dialogue or story or anything. I just, I just want to get into a story. And Richard 3, it's a game I also really should try and finish before death. I don't know if I will. It's not, not something I'm dead set on, but... Maybe if I enjoy playing it and I get sucked in like I did the first time when I played 90 hours in like a month, maybe that can happen. I don't know. Maybe maybe I can record it. Maybe I can live stream it. And I mean, all <laughs> recording my Game Boy has not done shit for me. It's not done anything for me. For many people, recording themselves playing games has changed their lives. For me, I can't even just raise my life to normal life as a result of putting in thousands of hours of effort. It's fucked, man. This is this is why I just got to get out of here. This is just this is nothing for me here. So I'm just trying to finish up a few last odds and ends, and then I'm out of this bitch. I'm just getting out of here. This is, it just wasn't meant to be for me. All right, let's end this here. I'm going to start playing again. Bye.